Knives. 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 A triple fivers. I've been collecting knives for about 15 years, and in this video, you're gonna see the majority of my folding knife collection. Just about 30 folding knives. And while each knife will be shown and described, a lot of it is about the journey, not as much the piece itself. There are certain pieces that have a lot of sentimental value to me, far more than I could describe, especially in a summary video like this. But I do think that there will be something for everyone. Some of the latest, some old tried and true models, and a great variety. If you enjoy this type of content, if you enjoy knives and enjoy gear, then I want to invite you to subscribe as well. Hitting that subscribe button not only supports the channel by helping it grow, but it also encourages me to continue to make content like this, which I hope you will enjoy. I stored the majority of my knives in this simple art supply box. It's a three drawer box that I got off of eBay. We're going to be looking just at folders today. And as you'll see, I primarily love EDC friendly folders, everyday carry folders, especially with unique specs or limited editions or first productions. And that being said, let's get into our first knife. This is the Northfield Unexcelled Great Eastern Cutlery Made Pattern Number 72. This is a USA made lockback traditional knife. And as you can see, it has beautiful patina with 1095 steel. It has nice ribbed nickel bolsters and a fine shield on those cokeable covers, which are very pretty. I've bought traditional knives for each of my sons. They've been born. This one's going to my oldest son, Leo. It is really aged gracefully. I love carrying it. And I hope that someday he enjoys the fact that I've uh, carried this knife for a number of years that I will pass on to him. The next knife that I'm going to show you is the Northfield Trapper, again made by Great Eastern Cutlery. This is a Tidio Cutlery branded GEC pattern number 43. This is a newer pattern with a beautiful walk and talk. Walk and talk, of course, indicates how these slip joints open, and this one does open and close beautifully. And as you can see, it does have a beautiful half stop and it opens up to a very fine clip point blade. This is a 3.5 inch blade, 3.4 ounces total for this knife, a nice brush bolster, it has brass liners, it has natural micarta covers, and it is just a great package all around. It's big, but it's not oversized, and it is a really nice everyday carry knife. Definitely enjoy carrying this one, and it will be a nice one for my son to enjoy some day. The third slip joint I'm going to show you today is the Great Eastern Cutlery 25. This is a little jack, and this one comes with a snakewood wood cover. And as you can see, this is a snappy sheep's foot little blade here. It's a 2.25 inch or a two and a quarter inch blade. Very practical little cutter. I like this because it's bigger than say your average Victorinox SD, has a lot more cutting performance, and yet it easily fits inside of a coin pocket in the pants. Not very heavy blade overall to carry. And yet it's very high quality, made to great Eastern Cutlery standards. Uh, really is a fun knife to own. Very big personality for being such a little knife. And that is a the theme that you're gonna see in this collection. Up next is another big personality small knife. This is the Triple Ot Design Hinderer Compact Dauntless. This is a newer release. I got this this year. This one is the OD G10, Olive Drab G10, and man, it has some serious action. I, I don't really consider knives to be um, tactical with regard to their action until I had this knife, and it took me a number of months to actually break it in properly. But once I did, I really was blown away. Uh, of course, the Dauntless uh, shape is uh, famous in the knife world with its uh, double choil on the blade. You have a sort of bayonet type of shape. It's a flat ground blade made by Hinderer. Rick Hinderer knives are such a high quality knife. And this one is coming in 20 CV. It has a lot of Hinderer hardware, the standoffs, amazing ergonomics for a smaller knife. This is a 3.38 ounce knife coming in with a 2.9 inch blade and it is on Hinderer's new triway pivot system. Really an impressive knife. I do intend to review this. To me, this is the perfect iteration of the Dauntless archetype. Up next is one of my all-time favorites, maybe my very all-time favorite, I'll have to think about that. This is the Chris Reeve Small Sabenza 21. And this is particularly the knife art edition of the 21 with a beautiful carbon fiber scale. 
you're looking at a knife with a 2.94 inch blade length coming in with s35 vn steel a steel that was specifically developed for this model actually by chris reeve very cool it is very archetypal again and it is also famous for its gorgeous action it's often described as hydraulic my example definitely embodies that very fine refined smoothed out action and it is a real pleasure to carry partially that's because of the excellent 2.3 ounces of weight in this knife but i really do think that right around three inches is a sweet spot for everyday carry knives this is one of the knives that I felt like I had made it when I got this knife as a knife collector. And the video that I made about it, also featuring the Kershaw Leak, was a big hit. And um, a lot of you guys have different opinions about that video. And so this knife definitely stands out to me, not only as a knife that I really enjoy as a personal collector, but also one as a YouTuber. And so the Small Sabenza 21 from Knife Art, this specific example is an absolute keeper and one that I can never recommend enough. Up next is what's often called the Ben Benchmade. This is the Benchmade 707 sequel. This is the 2017 Blade Show Edition, which features an aluminum handle in an adenized blue sunburst design. It's just a nicer version, a final version of the 707. This is again uh, almost 3 inch blade, 2.95 inches. This one's coming in at 2.65 ounces, so again very carryable. Great blade shape. Again, this is just a, a clip point, very practical, lots of belly, nice and stout tip. Benchmade is great at these very practical blade shapes, and the 707 is kind of overlooked, especially in comparison to the Griptilian. I actually got this knife for my birthday uh, back in 2017 uh, for myself, and it is um, one that I've carried a lot. I think with the small Sabenza 21, with this knife, the 707 sequel, in a traditional life, I would really be set in a three-knife collection. I've actually made a video about that. But this is one to hunt down if you really love the sequel style, the 707, and you want what is, in my opinion, the most attractive take on this. Okay, now here's a cool one. This is the Benchmade AFID 340. This is an old, discontinued knife from Benchmade's sort of notorious red class. You are looking at a 2.3. 38 inch drop point blade here coming in at a minuscule 1.65 ounces and yes this is a first production knife with a 440c blade not something you'll see on benchmades anymore and it also has some other kind of what i call dated features uh, for example it's only tipped down you can still find these knives for about a hundred bucks and uh, again it's just another really under the radar awesome edc especially if you're wearing formal wear with the all black you can wear it with the suit no problem and it has a very practical blade shape this one was originally assisted it has since been de-assisted and as you can see, the action isn't perfect, but I prefer the de-assisted style rather than having it originally assisted. So this is a cool kind of off the beaten path one. Here are all these nice side by side, as you can see. Uh, they're, they're really nice all together. And of course, I need to talk about a couple more of my Benchmade EDC knives right now. If you guys watched my recent knife video, you just saw this. This is my Benchmade Mini Grip uh, 556. This is the D2 Cabela's version. Looking at a 2.91 inch knife with 2.56 ounces of weight. So very comparable to the Benchmade 707. This is just sort of an old school everyday carry setup. And I got this for my birthday for my dad this year. Really a special knife uh, for that. And also just uh, as a classic Benchmade. Great ergonomics. Uh, tons of jimping. If you're a nut and fancy guy, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, the OD in black just goes under the radar. Here is a special one that I got to celebrate 50,000 subscribers. This is the Benchmade 486 Saibu, which means details, I guess, in Japanese. It's a Nakamura design, and it's kind of well-known uh, amongst his designs for this uh, very co interesting combination of features. It has a, a beautiful um, drop point blade, a very unique blade by the way, notice that ramping up to a very unique thumb stud with cocobolt inlays both in the thumb stud and in the handle as well which is G10. This has an excellent CPM 20 CV steel, had great action out of the box, uh, just a very special Benchmade, very unique Benchmade, very off the beaten path Benchmade. And it is uh, also very practical at 2.98 inches and 2.7 ounces. It also has Benchmade's mini uh, clip in um, 
the pocket there is going to just make it disappear. That mini clip is a nice design from Benchmade, definitely underrated. Nice little bamboo details in the backspacer. Overall, just a very cool, unique knife. And, you know, I'm all about details on this channel, so that's why I liked it. I'm not going to feature any of my little Victorinoxes or multi-tools in this video just because it's going to get too long, but I often have little multi-tools with me when I am uh, picking out my gear in the morning. Here is the tiniest knife that I have, the Spyderco Bug. If you'd like this, you can get one for $12. It is a massive 1.25 inch blade, uh, 13 CR, 13 MOV steel, so garbage steel, coming in at half an ounce. So itty bitty, this is what I call one of my red wall knives to my kids. <laughs> Here is a personal favorite of mine, uh, the Spyderco Techno. This is a knife that I lost and then purchased again after I lost it. It is uh, such a unique style. It's um, designed after Marcin Sliss's mouse, and it is just a really cool knife. 2.5 inch stonewash blade, beautifully finished. This is one of the Taiwanese Spydercos that are just finished to such a high standard. And man, look at that. There's where the design language really comes together in that 0.18 inches thick blade with the blue G10 backspacer. I love that. I don't like the second version of the Techno as much for that reason. That's lost that cool backspacer. This is just a really fun knife because it's so dang thick. Uh, it actually opens up with a, a, a commanding um, action for how small it is. Uh, the really clean frame lock and wire clip uh, also is um, a style that I've really just come to appreciate a lot. It's a little bit heavier at 3.6 ounces, but it still carries pretty compactly and pretty flatly. Uh, a lot of times this is compared to the Sabenza in its action, and I can see the comparison for sure. A lot of Spyderco's Taiwanese knives are reaching to a very high level of manufacturing prowess, comparatively speaking. On the other hand, here's a classic from Spyderco that's affordable that I truly love. This, of course, is the Spyderco Delica. This one happens to be in Super Blue, which is a 1 of 1200 sprint run. This is a 2.8 inch blade with 2.4 ounces of weight, so very carryable. Comes in Super Blue Steel. Uh, really love the Delica 4. It's kind of one of the benchmarks on the channel. You can open and close that lock back one-handed, no problem. It's not going to fly open, but it is very practical in the hand. Uh, just um, a real modern classic from Spyderco. And uh, although it is dated compared to perhaps some of Spyderco's designs, I think that it's going to be a, considered a benchmark in Spyderco design, a, uh, a moment that will be remembered fondly, uh, a high point. Another high point in Spyderco's probably 2000s, mid-2000s design is the Spyderco Dragonfly 2. And this knife is really special to me because I actually won this knife from a friend of mine in the gear world, Tony Scalambrini of Everyday Commentary. Hey, Tony, congratulations on your new law firm. Just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm still really enjoying this knife. I won it from his uh, Gear of the Year contest every year actually lost this knife for a year when we moved up to Minnesota. I was so bummed, but my wife found it for me, which is fantastic because I use this 2.25 inch blade all the time. Fantastic leaf shape, and this is another really light one coming in at 1.2 ounces with that fantastic wire clip. Carries so tiny in the pocket, even though it isn't the deepest carrying knife. Love it. Here is another kind of um, maybe eccentric choice in my collection, but one that I've come to really like. This is the CRKT Swindle. It's a Ken Onion design. It's a swayback pattern. The action on it is just amazing. It has wonderful ball bearing action on it, and for a, for a relatively cheap knife, I think I paid $40 for this, it has some of the best action in any of the knives that I've owned. Now this is a 3.25 inch knife coming in at 3.3 ounces because the frame is steel. It's not... Um, it is not a titanium frame. I wish it was. It has kind of a weird pocket clip here. Uh, when I carry this, I'm just wanting to carry something whimsical because this clip is not the most practical clip. In fact, it's kind of uh, cumbersome in the pocket. But I have kept this one around not only because I bought this on a road trip that is a really special memory. Uh, and I, I, whenever I pull this out, I'm reminded of that great road trip I had. Uh, I also carry it up because it's just killer action like seriously this is better than many of the actions on uh, many $200 knives that I've previously owned. Uh, the ergonomics are not great it's kind of counterintuitive that's just the sway back styles that it's um, swaying back the way it is so it's not good for some types of chopping but honestly you don't keep a knife like this just because it's the most practical blade shape. I've got plenty of practical knives this one has big personality and it has killer action. I do like Ken Onion styles 
Uh, well, most of them. Here's one that I got as a gift from my brother David. David, if you're watching, I hope you're doing well. This is a 1.9 inch little Kershaw chive. And this is um, what I would consider, frankly, an obsolete Kershaw design. Uh, 420 uh, steel, kind of lame steel, coming in at 1.7 ounces, which is actually oddly feels heavy for how little this knife is. And as you can see, it is an assisted knife. I don't have really any assisted knives in the collection except for this one. Uh, has a kind of a horrible tip down pocket clip, ugly, ugly clip, and all of that um, uh, billboarding uh, on the side of the blade, just got, or on the side of the handle, it's just kind of ugly. Uh, but you know what? It's a gift from my brother, and so I'll use that uh, special safety on it and uh, be reminded of that nice gift that I got um, whenever I pull it out. Up next is the CRKT PLR, and as you know, I just featured this knife, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. This is a 2.4 inch blade coming in at nearly 3 ounces, 2.98 ounces. Uh, this one is the D2 steel version, so it's a good solid teal tool steel from CRKT, made in China, so it does have um, a stainless steel frame lock, and it is running on Teflon washers. Uh, it's a, just another great double choil design. That's one of the things that I really like about my everyday carry knives is when I can get a full four finger grip on it. And uh, I like the uh, opening oval on this as well. It has a practical pocket clip. Action on this is subpar, but again, you're talking about a sub $50 knife. Uh, and it is quite a stout knife, great tip. Uh, just overall nice ergonomics. Do like this knife in the hand a lot. And it is just a nice, affordable, little big knife again in my collection that I enjoy. The CRKT PLR. Here's a more expensive little big knife in my collection that I've also recently reviewed. This is the Fox Knife Saru, and this is an urban, everyday, supply, unique edition. So the thing that's special about this, of course, is that it's made in Italy. Uh, it has a fantastic regular clip, not a deep carry clip, but a kind of stamp clip with the zirconium um, a ball bearing in the end which I think is evocative of um, custom knives. Uh, this is itself based off of um, a knife made by uh, Jesper Voxnes, the F9, uh, and it has great ergonomics. Again, a lot of personality. I sort of described this as an Italian supercar in the video. It has a very high-end steel. It's running on ball bearings. It's just a kind of a a uh, classy everyday carry knife. I, again, I'm finding myself carrying this knife a lot uh, when I am wearing formal wear because the combination of black and blue just really you know, makes the knife disappear in the pocket. And so on occasions where I'm wearing a suit, which is frequently because I'm in education, uh, this is a knife that I really have come to enjoy. Definitely kind of one of the more luxury knives in my collection. Now we are getting into the above three inch knives. I hope you're excited about that. I sure am. Let's take a look at some traditional bigger knives. Uh, straight up uh, first is the Buck 110 Auto. Look at this sucker. This is a Blade HQ exclusive. Yeah, we're looking at an automatic knife here, which is crazy for a buck 110 at least it's a fairly new thing these used to always only be aftermarket but in the last few years we do have awesome autos this one is also stone washed really highlighting that great clip point shape it is again a lock back in the kind of traditional buck style with the lock way back there but man the action is fun this is just a people pleaser a party knife and it is a knife that uh, i particularly enjoy uh, showing off to friends and stuff when they're coming by. Big 3.75 inch blade, very heavy at 7.10 ounces. Uh, just a cool, you know, knife to have in the collection, really for collectors uh, and for the Buck 110 lovers, which I definitely am uh, an all-time classic style of knife. Uh, can't have a knife collection without a Buck 110, and the auto is really fun. Here's my personal Buck 110 that I purchased a number of years ago. This is the 50th anniversary edition Buck 110 from 2014. Uh, comes in with a uh, sort of special shield uh, highlighting the 50 years of Buck 110. It has a unique tang stamp as well. Otherwise, it's a very standard issue Buck 110. Uh, when I was getting a Buck 110 for myself, and I'll explain why I did that in a little bit, I knew I wanted to get a special one, and I have to be looking in 2014. So I've really enjoyed having this in the collection. I do occasionally use this to clean birds or animals. Uh, that clip point blade is great for that. You got tons of um, places to put your hands in this long handle. And um, you know, it's really two hand operation, but uh, it's a classic and it is fun to have a special edition version. 
Now here is the reason why I ended up getting my own Buck 110 because before I got my specific version, uh, I had seen my dad use his Buck 110 for years. Uh, and this is uh, an older Buck 110 from uh, somewhere between 1974 and 1980. We're not exactly sure. But this was my dad's hunting knife for years. And I remember watching him clean birds and fish with this knife. And after I got my 110 in 2014 and showed him how I was excited about the Buck 110, uh, he decided to pass this along. So this is just a kind of great story. Uh, that I hope that my sons will remember someday, uh, sons and daughters really, that uh, dad uh, uh, took care of his, his equipment, uh, he enjoyed it for years, and then he passed it on when he was ready to pass it on. Uh, these days he still is using buck knives for a lot of his uh, game needs and a lot of his outdoorsmanship needs. And, uh, and so it is special to be the steward of his old Buck 110. Side by side they're very similar. You can see there's some rounding off in the... Um, the bolsters as well is in the handle cover, so there are some slight differences. Uh, Buck 110 guys could definitely talk more at length about that, but really they're just a classic style. Speaking of a new take on a classic style, this is the Benchmade Mini Cooper River. And this is a knife, I'll be honest, is actually sold as of the time of the making of this video. Uh, I got it as a complement to the Buck 110s that I have, but with a modern opening system, of course, with the access lock, and also because it comes in with a much better steel. Uh, the only problem is, is I like this knife so much that I don't want to have just the standard version with the S35V and steel. Uh, beautiful clip point. Love the aluminum bolsters. Love the diamond wood on the scales. Uh, just love everything about this knife. Uh, and this is a first production knife, so it wasn't just like uh, bought off the rack type of um, Benchmade Mini Crooked River, but this is now available in their custom shop and there's been a couple videos about this knife and how you can customize it and the custom shop ones are so cool it has a 3.4 inch blade coming in at 3.29 ounces so a little bit on the heavier side definitely not the um, uh, most high speed low drag of my Benchmades. That, however, would be the Benchmade 940, which this would be another candidate for maybe the best of the EDC knives in my collection. Super impressive carbon fiber uh, version of the 940. 3.4 inch blade, 2.44 ounces. Uh, with that incredibly cool reverse tanto shape, we've got beautiful blue standoffs with the carbon fiber scales. Uh, these machined smooth carbon fiber scales are so gorgeous. This one has a nice full size deep carry clip, probably my favorite clip from Benchmade. Action on this one is insane. It's just so good, so snappy, so easy to carry. 2.4 ounces is nothing for a knife with a nearly three and a half inch blade. And, um, this is probably the best bench made in production, in my opinion, right now. And uh, there's a lot of objective uh, reasons to think of that. The awesome machining, the carbon fiber scales, the very high quality CPM S90V steel. It's made in the USA. Very practical size. Very stout with that reverse tanto shape. Now here is its closest competition. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary Two. And of course you need to have a paramilitary 2 in your collection. Mine has a lynch clip on it. This is also a special edition of the paramilitary. This one has the uh, uh, textured carbon fiber scales with the M4 blade. And so M4, of course, is an impressive tool steel known for its wear resistance. Uh, it's not stainless, so I always keep it really oiled up. But this one came with just killer action. Every PM2's uh, compression lock action is a little different. Um, but if you break them in properly, and they're, they uh, are certainly able to be broken in pretty easily, uh, they just drop shot with um, uh, just a, an amazing... Um, a fluidity. It's just a really fun knife to carry. Again, killer ergonomics. Uh, nothing new to say about the Paramilitary 2, uh, but it is one that I enjoy carrying, even though it is, again, a full-size size knife at 3.44 inches. Um, I love the acoustics, actually, of the carbon fiber. Okay, here is a very special knife. Uh, this was a knife that arrived on my 35th birthday this year, the Spyderco Drunken. And of course, this is uh, Spyderco uh, paving new ground uh, in its CNC machining prowess uh, with amazing, amazing machining on both the lock side and on the carbon fiber scale. This is a, a very high-end Spyderco coming in at an expensive $400. But you see, the thing is, is everything is amazing about this knife. Well, except for one thing. First of all, the action. 
This is probably overall the best action on a spider coil that I've ever handled. It's easily as good as a Sabenza or the Hinderer. It is amazing. You've got a very cool blade shape here, of course, uh, and it just has uh, great details all around. Um, this is sort of like a, a higher end version of the Spidey Chef in some of its style elements. I had the Spidey Chef, didn't really love it, um, just seemed a little plain to me, but this 3.5 inch blade coming in at 3.08 ounces is amazing. Really shows what Spartaco can do. Look at that action. This knife is relatively new. I guess it has a ramped detent, which really helps with the action. Very impressive knife from Dmitry Sinkovich and Spartaco, the Spartaco Drunken. Uh, definitely a high end production knife that, for me, uh, checks off a ton of boxes of exotic materials, high end machining, a very practical blade shape, uh, killer action. Uh, so the Spyderco Drunken is one that I recommend. The pocket clip sucks though, so that's one problem that I want to uh, warn you about. Uh, for some reason, uh, it's just not bent correctly, or mine it certainly isn't. Uh, I can only insert it about halfway into my pocket. Now this is kind of a surprise because there is a similar knife that's in my collection, the ZT0470, also a Dmitry Sinkovich design, of course made by Zero Tolerance, that has a similar shape clip that doesn't have any problems at all. Now this is a little bit more affordable coming in at $260, running on ZT's KVT bearing system. 3.4 inch blade, 3.3 ounces, so a um, little bit shorter, a little bit heavier than the Drunken, but amazing ergonomics. I love the details in this too. This also has a lot of fine machining details and a killer action. Uh, the, the action feels a little bit more mechanical or something than the Drunken, uh, but it is super reliable and super enjoyable. Uh, I do love all the details. The pocket clip on this one, although it's not a deep carry clip, works fine for me. And it has this fantastic carbon fiber marbled insert and a 20 CV steel. So again, you're talking about a very high-end steel, just like a number of these other knives that I have, uh, which means great cutting performance. And of course, it has a fantastic uh, blade shape. So very solid knife from ZT. This is my current favorite ZT uh, in production, probably my favorite ZT that I've owned. Here are those clips again, uh, side by side with the Drunken. And uh, as you can see, there, the design language is similar, even though there are many differences in manufacturing. Action, again, is similar. These are two knives, just nice to have side by side. And um, I, I've just really enjoyed both of them in my collection. Uh, very interesting knives, uh, very high-end production knives, which uh, I, I think are probably my favorite segment of EDC knives to carry and to uh, own right now. Okay, back to the ZT0393. This is sort of a derivative of the ZT0392, which itself is a derivative of the Hinderer Eclipse. Uh, I got this knife just to try it out. I was very interested in the 0393 when it was out, but I was never ambitious enough to get it. This is a high-end ZT for sure, coming in with 20 CV steel. It's a combination of G10 and titanium. Uh, beautiful... Um, Finishing details, I love the combination of, of uh, PVD and um, uh, natural finishing on the blade, uh, satin finishing on the blade, and then the G10 and anonized blue on the scales is very cool. Uh, the uh, action on this is a little lazy because it was designed to be able to be opened by the thumb stud and this is also heavy coming in at five ounces so even though I was curious about this uh, and I, I did uh, trade for this I actually I don't think I'm gonna keep it now on the much different end of the spectrum here is a blue knife that's very affordable this is the open L number eight and this is the stainless steel version here is a knife that anyone can try out for under 20 bucks uh, and it is just a, a really fun clip point style and in stainless there's not a lot of maintenance it has a kind of interesting ring lock style on it so that it is um, uh, even though sort of traditionally sort of styled as a slip joint you can turn that ring and use it for more robust cutting casts this is like your classic picnic type of pocket knife uh, great for cutting cheese great for cutting meats um, uh, very classic and uh, I remember getting this knife with my friend Jason at um, Ann Scuff in Laysen, so it's got a great memory there. This is my brother David's Benchmade Adamus. Uh, this is uh, model number 275 in the Benchmade catalog. Looking at a big 7.7 .7 ounce knife, uh, a 3.82 inch blade, uh, and as you can see, it's um, 
uh, combination edge. Uh, I still sort of think of this as my brother David's knife because he sold it at one point when he needed some cash, and I'm just hanging on uh, to it for him. But in the meantime, I do enjoy this big honking knife. It's 0.73 inches thick, which I think is the thickest of the uh, folding knives that I have. Uh, obviously designed for military and tactical use, uh, a cyber design. A very stout knife, very cool knife. Um, you know, this is just a, a beefcake of a knife in the hand. Uh, it does have great ergonomics for how huge it is, uh, coming in at nearly four inches. But um, not really in my wheelhouse as far as um, my typical folding knife tastes go. But it is uh, fun to have in the collection as something different. Um, are you an Adamas fan? Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of this big, beefy Benchmade. Uh, the Benchmade Adamas. Yes, look at that uh, awesome G10 details. Uh, just a big honking knife. The pocket clip is really overwhelmed on this knife. <laughs> Here is a knife that is equally big and a little bit easier to carry. This is a Spyderco Resilience. I was recently talking about how I enjoy this knife in um, uh, another recent uh, knife video, so make sure you check out all my knife videos. This has uh, a, a knife blade of 4.25 inches, uh, and it is just ACR 13 MOV, so it will be a, a lot to uh, resharpen, although I haven't had to yet. Uh, coming in at 5.4 ounces, so it's actually 2 ounces less than the Adamas. This full-size blade is just a fun one to carry because it's just so dang big. It is made in China, and it's not made to the high standards of manufacturing that, say, like this USA-made Paramilitary 2 has. But um, you know what? It's just sometimes fun to carry a big knife. And the Resilience is a very low price of entry for that. It's 50 bucks. I got this uh, Resilience at Walmart, actually, and it uh, came with the Spyderco box and everything, no problems. And, um, you know, I'm not really committed to big Spydercos, so I'm not spending a lot of money on the larger spider codes that are out there so having the resilience in the collection is fun uh, for having that big spider co honking spider co uh, with that special clip and uh, not having to pay too much now this is a special knife because this is my son leo's first knife this is actually not my first knife this is the buck bantam really practical lockback knife i got it for leo because i wanted him to have a knife that had a practical blade shape got him used to the lockback and was also very lightweight uh, also affordable enough that if he lost it, it wouldn't be heartbreaking for him. He does use this knife a lot, and I'm uh, glad that he's enjoying it. Now, let's wrap things up with a very special knife. This is my first knife. This is the knife my dad got me, and it is uh, a Remington Trapper. It's a jackknife, a uh, trapper knife with two blades. Of course, you have the uh, clip point here with the Remington branding. I think this uh, knife was made by Case. Of course, the trapper style goes way back to the 1920s when it was uh, used for... Um, uh, cattle purposes, we'll put it that way. Clip point would be used for um, regular things, but then you have a second blade on here, which I'll show you in a sec. This uh, second blade is called a spay blade, and you would use that for uh, castration. So um, anyway, I hardly have used that blade. Um, haven't had any castrations I've had to do, thankfully. <laughs> but this is just a special knife. It was the first knife I got from my dad, and so I'm still glad that I have it around. And I have cleaned many a bird with it, too. And guys, you might not be surprised, but I have untold, super cheap, like, sub-$20 knives in my collection. This is a San Remu 605 long, discontinued, nifty little EDC knife, uh, recommended by Everyday Commentary originally. Random Kershaw that you would get in a camp set. Nice deep carry clip. Uh, still have it around. You know, we all have piles of uh, cheap knives like this that uh, just somehow seem to find their way into a knife collector's home. Uh, and uh, this one in particular, the CRKT uh, M16, this one is one that I actually had in college. Um, I remember not liking it very much because it didn't flip well and didn't cut very well. But it managed to stick around and not get lost. So I still have my old uh, M16 from college, a knife that there are probably much better versions out now uh, without the safety, amongst other things. And last but not least, here is a little Victoria Knox slip joint that I gave to my brothers. I believe it was for one of my brother's weddings where I was the best man. And that just about wraps it up. Thanks.
All right, guys, let me know in the comments below what knives in my collection are your favorite. What are the standout stories in your knife collection? Tell me about the knives that mean something to you. I'm as interested in that as hearing about the actual cool knives that you have. So maybe let me know what you think your coolest knife is and the one that has the most sentimental value. I'd appreciate it and I would enjoy hearing from you and you will hear a reply from me if you share that story. All right, guys, do please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far and you haven't hit the thumbs up, what do you do? doing hit the thumbs up and now it's time for some bloopers all right guys let me know in the comments below what knives in my collection are your favorite what are the standout stories in your knife collection tell me about the knives that mean something to you i'm as interested in that as hearing about the actual cool knives that you have so maybe let me know what you think your coolest knife is and the one that has the most sentimental value i'd appreciate it and i would enjoy hearing from you and you will hear a reply from me if you share that story all right guys do please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video if you made it this far and you haven't hit the thumbs up what do you doing hit the thumbs up and now it's time for some bloopers knife knives woof <laughs> knives